After over a decade, Mario Party Superstars brings the series back to its original roots, and I couldn't be happier about it. So I wanted to celebrate and go through every single minigame and rank them from worst to best. This list is based off how fun and replayable the games are. So with all that said, let's get her ranked. Add Atlas VPN. Look, I know you all have heard of Atlas VPN before. You already know about the blazing speeds, and how it can protect unlimited devices at the same time. You already know it stops ads and malware, and that you'll save money while shopping online. But were you aware that there's a special link in the description to get early access to Atlas VPN's Black Friday deal with 86% off and three extra months for free? Absolutely insane. Make sure to click the link in the video description below. You'll be able to save money with Atlas VPN because multiple worldwide services adjust their prices online based on economic metrics. So if you want to buy a plane ticket like I have recently, you can set your VPN to India and we'll save money by just doing that. So make sure to click the link in the description and now back to Mario Party Superstars. 105 River Raiders. It's weird calling this game the worst when there really isn't a horribly bad mini game in Superstars at all. But I'll admit that River Raiders is very slow and just kind of drags on. You go down a lazy river and collect coins, but your movement speed is ludicrously relaxed. And I think that's the point, but I'd rather play anything else. 104 Puddle Paddle. It's very much the same as River Raiders, but slightly cooler. You'll team up with another player and collect coins that the Hammer Bro throws into the water. The paddling is responsive, but your turns are really wide, so it feels like you have to plan 8 light years in advance to get anything before your opponent does, so it's just okay. 103 Bowser's Big Blast. I know Mario Party is a very luck-based game, but I really don't like when the mini games are like that as well. I'm aware this is a very split opinion too. Some people love this kind of stuff, and some people hate it. But honestly, for me, I don't like pushing the wrong switch and losing an entire game of Mario Party because of Bowser's big mother blast of bullshit. That's just my thoughts, you know? 102, Hide and Sneak. It's the same as Bowser's Big Blast, as it's completely luck-based, but now there's a chance of three people winning instead of just one. Three players hide behind a rock, tree stump, mushroom house, or bush, and they might get spotted. The thing of the matter is the direction the characters move in before they hide. It actually isn't correlated with how they're moving, so just ignore what they're doing on the screen. It's just made to deceive you. 101, Winner's Wheel. You push a button and get an item from a roulette wheel. This barely even qualifies as a game, and if it does, is, there is no substance to it at all. At the very least, you might get an item out of it. 100. Swinging with Sharks. You push the jump button and either fall in the water or get an item. It's another item minigame, so there isn't much to it. 99. Archer Rival. If you're the one shooting the arrows, enjoy your free win because it's almost impossible to win in the group of three. Even when the Boo and Goomba are acting stupid, it's still super hard to avoid the arrows when you move as slow as a sloth. Minigames that are virtually one-sided like this are okay to have, but they're not that great. 98. Piranha's Pursuit. And speak of the devil, this 1v3 minigame has a player on a skateboard while the other three helplessly ground pound a cloud to grow PD Piranha. Which, if you think about it, doesn't make any sense because it's a cloud, but whatever. The issue is that as long as the skateboarder never trips up, they'll win every single time. Watering the plant only helps if the skateboarder makes a mistake, which is extremely unlikely to happen. 97. Trap Ease Artist. A bunch of Goombas are roaming around a field, and you have one shot to drop a cage and catch more than everyone else. This really teeters on being luck-based, because you can't predict how the Goombas are gonna move, but at least you have some control. It does feel good nabbing a gold one and a bunch of normal ones all at once, but you're also just as likely to hold out for the best drop and end up with nothing. 96. Bobbing Balloons. Shoot an arrow like your Cupid and nab yourself a snazzy little item. It's simple, but there's a bit of fun in timing out your shot to get the best prize possible. 95. Quicksand Cash. Dressed in a Bowser suit, you magically change the direction of quicksand and collect coins that the other three players miss. It's not a bad minigame per se, but it's a little boring if you're in the middle because you're just sitting there, and the other three players are slipping and sliding all over the place, which can be annoying. 94. Tidal Toss. I'm really conflicted because it's hard to tell if this 1v3 is evenly balanced or not. The player in the boat creates massive tidal waves that knock the group of three back if hit by them. If they fall off, the player in the boat wins. The thing is, though, you can time out jumping over the waves if you know what you're doing, but the waves also come in really fast and high, so it's not that easy to avoid. Because of that, I have to put it near the bottom. 
93. Roll call. Do you like counting? Well, now you can do that with toads, boos, or bobbums. You need to get the closest amount counted or get the exact amount if you're really good. That's the only issue with roll call. If you can count quickly and are quick, then there isn't much challenge here. The boos do make it more interesting because they'll fade in and out sometimes, and the bobbums total will change because they explode. So there's that at least. 92. Goomba Spotting We've got another counting minigame, but it's much more varied and difficult. A bunch of Goombas randomly run from one hill stump to the other, and you don't really know how they're going to come in. Sometimes they're in big stacks, sometimes they run in a long line, it's random every single time. You also can't move your counter down, so you aren't able to make adjustments for mistakes. 91. Manner of Escape I really enjoy this minigame, but there's an element of luck thrown in here that spoils it slightly. You run through doors that strangely resemble Hotel Mario of all things, and you have to find the right one to move down a floor and eventually reach the entrance. It's a cool idea, and forces you to pay attention to which doors you've gone through as well as everyone else's. There's basically a chance that you'll lose only because someone gets lucky multiple times. 90. Coconut Conk Three players ground pound some trees and drop bee coconuts, while one player rolls around in a barrel. This one can really vary on its fun factor. It depends on how experienced everyone is because either the barrel player will win easily or will lose right away. The rolling is also a little too slow to keep up with the coconuts, but it doesn't matter if the other players aren't fast enough. 89. Cashapult In this 2v2, you'll take turns jumping through the sky grabbing coins. This is one of the few coin mini games that I kinda like because it requires you to carefully pick your route if you want to end up getting all the coins, which you can technically do. 88. Flash Forward For some reason, there's five different stages you can cycle through, which is kinda neat. I wish more mini games had different backgrounds like this one. The goal is to be up in front of the camera when the timer runs out. What it boils down to is only the last two seconds mattering, as you're in a mad rush to punch everybody out of the way. 87. Goal. Yeah, let's just have one goalie dodge three soccer balls at once. That's fair. To be honest, though, it's not as unfair as it sounds because the goalie can move and dive really fast. So it really comes down to who has better timing and forward thinking. 86. X-Ray Payday. And this is why I have trust issues with conveyor belts. You have to try to memorize what's inside each question mark block to get as many coins as possible. You can only see what's inside each one for maybe a second, so you have to constantly memorize three blocks at a time. It's a lot harder than it sounds, because sometimes you'll miss time grabbing the box, then you get hit, and you end up forgetting what's inside all the other boxes because you got so disoriented. 85. Spin Doctor. Not sure why Doctor is in the title, but yes, there's definitely some spinning happening. The blue areas spin in every direction, while the red is more restricted. So you have to figure out which direction is going to be fastest, and sometimes that can be frustrating. And that's only because the spinning puts the pacing down to a damper. You just kind of sit around and wait for half this minigame. 84. Cake Factory. Make the perfect cake with one dude putting the cake on a platter and the other adding a big ass strawberry on top. Perfect. The worst looking cake ever. But the minigame was enjoyable because you have to time out grabbing the food as well as when to place it down. It's a very team oriented game. The only problem is they slowed down the overall minigame compared to the original. 83. Dark and Crispy. I imagine that's what Bowser is called by his girlfriend, Dark and Crispy. But that's besides the point. Don't think about that. Bowser is hiding in the dark, and you have to avoid him in his fire. It's cool to see classic Bowser minigames like this return. They're a nice change of pace and fairly enjoyable. 82. Roll out the barrels. As long as you have functioning eyeballs, you basically just get whatever item you want. The items are placed in barrels, which spin around the screen. But as long as you're paying attention, it's very easy to keep track of, and you'll get what you desire. 81. Messy Memory. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it's as sharp as a beak. There's a bunch of items on two shelves, and half of them end up on the floor. You have to put them back exactly as they were as fast as possible, or at least get as close as you can remember. Depending on how awake I am really harpens how pleasing this one is. 80. Skewer Scurry. One guy controls all the spikes, and the other three have to avoid them. Because of the slight delay in the spike delivery, there's this great rush of moving out of the way and avoiding getting sent to smithereens. Mario Party 10 actually had a few good ideas deep in there, didn't it? 79. Boulder Ball. One of the few minigames that made improvements over the original. When you get hit by the boulder, you aren't pushed down the hill as much, making it easier to recover and more likely to win. It's still not perfect since winning as the boulder thrower still isn't that hard, but it's overall a bit more balanced. 78. Tackle Takedown. It's the simplest version of modern Madden football. Three players try to tackle the player with the football in hand. Sometimes you'll win easily, and sometimes you'll miss dive after dive. 
77, Etch and Catch. I really like the idea of this one. You and a partner have to make a circle around the little butt boy to get a point, but I can't for the life of me figure out a good way to control this one because the turning is purposefully slippery. Not only that, but both players need to have a strategy going into it if you want to win, or you'll just draw in the same direction and get nowhere. 76, Tug O' War. I'm shocked they brought this minigame back with the same controls as Mario Party 1. They even included a warning about not using the palm of your hand, which is just hilarious. It's classic Tug O' War, and it's still a good time. Although, honestly, all I can think about is Squid Game now that I've seen the show. Like, shows cursed me. 75, Hammer Slammer. Mash the A button to a certain height to get an item based off how high the rocket gets. It's one of the rare item minigames that feels like you actually have to use your brain to play it, which I very much appreciate. 74, tube it or lose it. Inner tubing has never been more exciting as one player tries to run over everybody with a spike machine. While I like trying to avoid the spike machine thanks to the quick and precise movement, I mostly just appreciate the shy guy skiing on the sideline. I mean, just look at him. He's just kind of hanging out, going for a nice little stroll while we're trying to evade death. He's so cool. 73, Dinger Derby. It's not a Mario Party if there isn't a baseball minigame included somewhere. Dinger Derby is one of the more challenging ones as the ball comes at you at different speeds, often giving you very little time to react. Sometimes it'll even throw two balls at once for extra points, but they're always the hardest to hit. 72, Honeycomb Havoc. One of the best big brain minigames out there. The goal is to avoid picking up the honeycomb since they're filled with bees doing their due diligence. You can hit a dice roll of one or two, so you have to plan ahead and try to predict what everyone else is gonna roll so you don't get out. Its slow nature adds to the experience because it kind of forces you to double guess yourself, which adds this strange amount of suspense. 71. Pogo a go go. The world's greatest pogo stickers land on a platform with holes and try to survive while someone in the middle rotates the stage around. It's a pretty cool idea, and can be challenging if you're close to too many holes at once. 70. Sneak and Score. This is one of those mini games I'll likely get slack for, but I've always disliked this game. You have to push a button and go back to the entrance without the chain chop noticing you, and all you have for defense is hiding in a barrel. If you're caught, that's it, the game is over. So I love the concept of this whole thing, but the amount of time it takes the player to get in the barrel is so long that it's almost impossible to survive. I mean, I'm probably just really bad, which is why I didn't put it near the bottom of this list. It deserved some credit. 69, Spotlight Swim. Three players try to catch one person hiding in the water. It's actually a pretty decent minigame because the player in the water can also duck underneath to more sneakily get around the spotlight, so it's fairly well balanced. 68, Rock and Raceway. Just rock L and R over and over to send your horse moving forward. You can get a carrot power up to have unlimited stamina for as long as you want to. While I like this minigame, it's a touch on the dull side because you can only go so fast. Most of the time, you're just edging at the end of your stamina meter. Don't take that the wrong way. 67, Beach Volley Folly. If you like volleyball, then you'll surely be into this one. Now, maybe it's just me, but the gameplay feels very slow and boring at times because the volley moves slow enough that you'll always be able to hit it, but it still controls well and looks pretty nice. 66, Mush Pit. Whoever gets the Mega Mushroom from the block turns super large and in charge, and they try to run into everyone else before they shrink back down. It's one of those mini games that either ends in five seconds or lasts the entire time limit. Its unpredictable nature makes it fun enough. 65, Parasol Plummet. Using the best umbrella you've ever seen in your life, you float down some wall and collect coins and bags. It's actually kind of fun since you have a good amount of control on how fast you fall and which direction to move towards. 64, Bobsled Run. Take a bobsled and go down the hill as fast as possible. It's got a couple of speed boosts and jumps to add some excitement, and it's still a fun time. I've noticed that the turning is different from the original. It's much more sensitive and relies more on both players moving right or left simultaneously. And I just gotta mention that the new ice walls are looking hella dank. I like this way more than the snow walls, just saying. 63, look away. Just look a different direction from the top player. That's all you're doing. What makes this minigame so delightful is the fact that you're given a second or two to keep changing your direction. It's a good way to psych out the player on top, but sometimes it just doesn't work and you'll get booted out regardless. It's also hilarious how when you lose, everyone looks at you in shame or disappointment. 62, slot car derby. This one was always hard to control back in the day, and it's still kind of like that. By moving the joystick, your car will move forward and around the track, but you can't go too fast or you'll spin out losing tons of time. So it's all about finding that balance of how fast and slow you should go. 
61. Bill Blasters. You'll spin around in a circle and fire bullet bills at players to eliminate them. In a way, I kind of hate how hard it is to aim your shot because of the speed you spin at, but at the same time, that's what makes this one so unique. You gotta learn how to time out your shot so it hits the others. 60. Shy Guy Says. Just follow the Shy Guy's direction. If he throws up a red or white flag, you just have to do the same. Over time, though, he'll try to psych you out by putting up both flags, or quickly putting one down and then using the other. As time moves on, you have to react faster and faster, and that's what makes Shy Guy Says so enjoyable. 59. Mass Meteor. Without spacesuits, fly through space and avoid hitting the meteors. I'm admittedly really bad at this one, but it's still a pretty cool duel game and reminds me of this random Jimmy Neutron Flash game that I played in 2004. It's called Space Blast if you're curious, but anyway, this is a solid minigame. Man, I totally forgot that Space Blast existed. I loved this game as a kid. 58. Vine with me. Jump from vine to vine like you're playing Pitfall on Atari. That's a game nobody remembers because it came out like 600 years ago, but anyway, the objective is to time out your jumps so you'll grab each upcoming vine. It gets a little tricky at the end as well. 57. Picking Panic. This one reminds me of Vine With Me due to its swinging nature, but it's team-based and requires you to drop cherries into a basket. Getting into a good swing of things can be a blast since you need to time grabbing and dropping cherries pretty well. 56. Winner or Dinner. A much more interesting coin minigame. They get coughed out of a pot with spinies. That, on top of piranha plants, actually makes it fairly easy to get hit by some sort of enemy, so the layer of difficulty is nice. I also love how at the end of this one, everyone just gets sucked into a tornado for some reason. Ah, Mario Party 8 mini games sure had their weird outros. 55. Nightlight Fright. You simply have to stop the chain chomp with the flashlight and let him get as close as possible. This basic idea is overtaken by the fact that the chain chomp moves completely randomly. The barrels don't slow him down. He just goes forward whenever he's feeling it. And there's also a delay with your flashlight, making it scarier trying to time out your flash. 54. Hammer Drop. Hammer Bro is feeling super generous and drops a bunch of coins for us to grab, with the occasional hammer here and there. I really like this one because of how many coin bags he gives us, and it's much better than the original because the controls are way smoother. 53. Hot Rope Jump It's just a little bit of jump roping. No big deal. Don't worry about the fact that the rope is made out of fire. That doesn't matter at all. There's also an endless mode for Hot Rope Jump too, which tests your skills at how long you can last without burning to a crisp. 52. Snowball Summit Roll up a snowball and yeet someone down the hill. While I love the idea of this one, it can be a tad frustrating when two snowballs connect and they both disintegrate on the spot. I get that it makes sense for that to happen, but that's the sacrifice for building up a large snowball. They send players farther, but are also harder to control and maintain. 51. Later Skater. I skate to your heart's content. You have to make the sharpest and smoothest turns to pull up first place. The turning does feel a little weird at first, but once you get used to it, it's a blast trying to cut corners and jump ahead of the crowd. 50. Burn Style. This is basically hot rope jump, but slightly better. The spikes spin around, and you're slightly less restricted because you can move around in 3D, just in case you need to correct your jump at all. Plus, it's a bit easier to tell where the spike bar is from the way the camera angle is presented. 49. Facelift. I can't believe how much more challenging this remake one is. I appreciate that there's little indicators now that show you where to grab Bowser's face, but man, the accuracy itself is way more precise than it used to be, which is definitely a good thing. I was doing really poorly with this remake because I'm so used to the leniency of Mario Party 1. 48. Bumper Balloon Cars. You'll use the spikes on the front of your car to bop everyone's balloons. The only issue with this mini game is just how quickly it's over. It typically takes less than 10 seconds, but it's just really nice sneaking behind someone and snagging the edge of their balloon. It just feels raw and powerful. 47. Money Belts. Run along a conveyor belt and get as many coins as you can. I like that it's a 1v3 since that makes for two different experiences. The top player can't really see what coins are coming, while the bottom can only pick up the scraps and have more candy obstacles to worry about. 46. Hand Car Havoc. Mash the pedal on the hand car to get across the treacherous train track as fast as you can. You'll also need to lean from side to side to prevent falling, so there's a good amount of teamwork required. Your enjoyment of Hand Car Havoc really depends on how much your teammate leans and maintains good speed since it's pretty easy to fall if you aren't careful. 45. Dungeon Dash. Push left and right to get across the dungeon. Now, I always prefer the desert version of this stage, but this one's fine too. It is nice that if you make a mistake, the delay in moving again isn't nearly as long as it used to be. 44. Leaf Leap. Climb up the vine by jumping off all the leaves. It's surprisingly easy to make mistakes if you go too fast, since the next leaf doesn't show up until you land on a new one. So for that reason, I vastly prefer... 43. What Goes Up. The better version of Leaf Leap. It's virtually the same game, but you can actually see what's coming and better plan your jumps out. Plus, there's more variety since the paratroopers tend to move around. We're getting into the games that are replayable now, starting with this one. 42. Dizzy Dancing. One of the few mini games that drastically changed for the better. Instead 
instead of grabbing one note and the whole game ends, you have to grab the most notes before time runs out. This is a much better way of going about dizzy dancing since it makes the game last longer, and it also gives players more time to get used to their distorted controls. 41. Squared Away Tiny Square versus the Big Squares You just try to survive getting squished if you're the small guy. Generally, it's super easy to avoid the Big Squares unless you aren't paying attention, or they do a good job teaming up and cornering you. I also like that they added 8-bit Mario as the background. That's pretty neat. 40. Speed Hockey It sure is speedy fast. The longer the shell is in play, the faster it gets and the harder it is to control. The hardest part isn't even scoring, but not scoring on yourself. It's so easy for the front player to bonk the shell from behind and have it slide into your own goal. I hate when that happens. 39. Blockstar A fairly bizarre puzzle game where you have to get matches of 5 by sending colors to the top by clicking on the bottom. It's hard to wrap my mind around this one, and honestly it feels a bit clunky, but it's probably just me being a noob boy. 38. Chip Shot Challenge Here's yet another minigame that's been improved on. You have one chance to get the perfect shot. Whoever scores closest is the winner. What I'm really glad to see is that you can skip the computer player's turns if you want to. That's a really great QOL future. And can we just look at this grass for a second? Oh, it looks so soft and comfortable. Like, I could probably sleep on this grass if I wanted to. 37. Castaways Speaking of improvements, Castaways has a lot of great changes, too. It's one of the best coin minigames because flicking the rod actually works properly. It kind of worked in Mario Party 1, but it was always easier to just flick for the back and that's that. Now, it's easier to aim for the front and middle row. And on top of that, the reeling is way faster when you miss out on money, so you waste less time. 36. Bounce and Trounce Spin around on a pogo stick and knock everybody off the stage. The spinning isn't quite as easy as you'd think, since you have to do a big jump to spin at all, so you have to carefully time when you attack the others. 35. Balloon Burst Just blow up Bowser the fastest. There's not much else to it. Despite its simple premise, getting good at timing the pump is pretty fun, especially since you team up with someone else, so you have to rely on them to pump well too. 34. Cheap Cheap Chase A Cheap Cheap is very angry at you for some reason and wants to eat you, so you have to swim through water while also avoiding spikes. It's also interesting to note how the Cheap Cheap just inhales the spikes like it's a normal Tuesday for him. I think this fish is going to overtake the human species one day. Just You better watch out, okay? While I definitely enjoy this minigame, the mashing does get tiring since you have to do it for a pretty long time. 33. Ice Hockey The name says it all. You play ice hockey and have to score the most points. It controls pretty well and is simplified to just four players which is kind of nice. One of the reasons I've never liked normal sports games is because you have to constantly switch between players, which is really disorienting. But here, it's just two people, so it's easier to focus. 32. Motor Rooter One of the most memorable dual minigames. You race to the finish in this strange electric pipe while also riding a Koopa Shell car. There are speed boosts and lots of amp walls to avoid. The turning is a little disorienting when you get on the ceiling, but this is still a really fun minigame. 31. Shell Soccer A shockingly good take on soccer. Instead of shooting into a goal, you need to hit all the Goombas instead. Shell Soccer is paced pretty well too. It's a great idea that I'd honestly have seen myself doing with cones as a kid playing soccer on the streets. 30. Ice Rink Risk Spinies fall from the sky and enter an ice rink. I'm assuming Lekitu is dropping them, but we don't know for certain. The respective is top down, so it's a little hard to see where to go, but I like how difficult it gets once multiple Spinies get on the playing field. 29. Pit Boss Imagine Ice Rink Risk, but Bowser is doing all the damage. It's virtually the same game, but the scenario is a little more interesting and the controls also aren't slippery, which is a plus. 28. Bumper Balls I was worried about this minigame because when they remade it in the top 100, the physics were completely wonky and ruined. I'm glad to report that they've been fixed as they used to be, so matches are even and intense just like in the old days. There's also multiple different playfields, one being ice, which is slightly more slippery, and the other grassy with sand piles, adding a bit of variety. 27. Pushy Penguins These penguins sure are in a rush to go for a swim, and unfortunately, we're right in the middle of their business. I really enjoy this one for the sheer novel concept of it all. It's just fun barraging your way through all the penguins and trying to stay on land. 26. Paint Misbehaving These poor Goombas are getting absolutely soaked in pink and blue paint. The objective is to end up with the most Goombas with your color. This minigame really reminds me of Splatoon not just because of the ink, but also because only the ending gameplay matters. You can go from winning the whole time, but lose in the last three seconds if you aren't careful. 25. Reverse a bomb. Push the bombs really fast and don't get blown up by the bombs. You wouldn't think this would be that exciting, but it is because the bombs move faster and faster, so the button pressing gets more and more thrilling by the second. It gets to a point 
point where you have to decide which button presses are safe so you don't explode and lose precious seconds. 24. Rocky Road I'm sorry to bring this up, but this minigame still reminds me of that horrifying German jump scare car commercial. But regardless, you go around punching a bunch of boulders faster than the other team. I'm glad that this is a 2v2 because it requires you to work with your team on what parts of the boulders to break up. 23. Bombs Away I'm not really sure what we did to piss off this pirate ship so that it feels inclined to launch several cannonballs at us, but oh well. You have to jump around and avoid the bombs while also not tipping over into the water. At the end, a massive barrage rains down as well. 22. Storm Chasers Piranha Plant very thirsty, so you need to give them as much water as possible to make them big and strong. A tiny rain cloud moves around the stage, so the goal is to just absorb the most water. I really love this one because of how frantic the action is. There's even body moles that pop up out of nowhere to watch out for. 21. TikTok Hop Jump over the hour hand while it spins around. It's another one of those super simple mini games, but it's so addicting to replay, especially since there's an endless mode. The minute and hour hands are pretty unpredictable, so you have to have a good reaction time to be able to survive for a long time. Time. 20. Monty's Revenge Poke your head out for the longest amount of time without getting bonked by the Monty's. I love how this is just reverse whack-a-mole and how well it plays. There's actually a lot of strategy in terms of where you should poke your head out and how long you should do so. 19. Mecha Marathon Mash the A and B buttons together and watch the Shy Guy fly. You may need to conserve your strength because you'll have to mash for 10 seconds, but it's really cool seeing how far your Shy Guy goes. It's actually kind of suspenseful since the Shy Guys all move the same way. You can't tell when one is going to drop. 18. Pokey Pummel I know this is just a button masher, but I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy flexing my mashing skills. I have this technique, which I'm sure other people have learned, but basically I just shake my arm really, really hard and push the button way faster than normal. So it's really funny watching the Pokey get completely destroyed in 5 seconds. It's exactly like Mecha Marathon, but shorter. 17. Mario's Puzzle Party I'll admit that I'm atrocious at this puzzle game, but I can't deny how great it is. You make matches of two and try to get multiple combos to score more points. Blocks will fall to make this whole process harder, but you'll sometimes get thwomps to help out. It's a solid idea and addicting to play again and again. 16. Tipsy Tourney Run around a board and uncover all the tiles. I really like this one because every little movement you make matters. Subtle changes in direction can completely alter how the shell moves, which makes for a surprisingly in-depth minigame. 15. Coney Island I don't usually crave ice cream, as weird as that sounds, but this minigame makes me want it. You have to have the tallest stack of ice cream, and you can only stack it by finding the shadows and standing over one before anyone else does. I also love how your movement gets slower the more scoops you have, as if each ice cream scoop weighs like 50 pounds or something. 14. Eats a Pizza Another food-related minigame. This time, you devour a massive pizza as fast as possible. It's a very tiring button masher, but my god is this one a blast. It's just so satisfying seeing half a pizza get eaten so quickly, and if you're really good, you can eat the whole thing before time runs out. 13. Crazy Cutters A super iconic minigame. Draw around either a boo, chain chomp, or blooper, and get as close as you can to the edges for the most points. The controls feel much more precise than they did in Mario Party 1, and it's a cool idea in general. I like how each enemy you cut around drastically gets harder too. It can be tricky to tell where to be sometimes. 12. Stick and Spin One of the best puzzle games included with Mario Party. You have to match 5 balls and you'll try to send junk to the other player to win. This one is really addicting and is something that I could play for quite a long time if I let myself. It's just well paced and fun to look at. 11. Snow World Snowboarding has never been so enjoyable. You push the buttons in a circle as fast as you can and pull off some sweet spinning action. It's another one of those mini games that's replayable because it's fun trying to improve how many spins you can do. Every time I see this mini game, all I can think of is that hilarious task on YouTube where each frame is a spin and it caps out at like 9720 within a second. I mean, look at this! 10. Sky Pilots I always loved this one back in the day, but it always felt a little sluggish. This remake, on the other hand, feels amazing and runs perfectly. You and someone else control a plane and have to get to the end as quickly as possible. One person flaps the wings and the other steers. You can get boost through rainbow rings and have to avoid a variety of enemies and obstacles. 9. Catch You Letter I couldn't tell you why the Shy Guy is in such a rush, but you have to give him as many letters as possible. It's such a goofy yet intriguing idea. I love how the Shy Guy is just barely faster than you, so you're forced to cut corners to reach him. It's a strangely strategic game given how simple the concept is. 8. Mushroom Mix-Up When you think of Mario Party minigames, this is the one that always comes to mind. Toad holds up a color, and the others have to get there as everything else is sent into the water. It's an extremely competitive one as you ground pound players to stop them from moving around, and it gets faster and faster as time goes on. 7. Tread Carefully, or as it used to be called, Shell Shock. Not really sure why they changed the name for this one, but it's the same classic game that you all know and love. You 
You're in a tank and you have to hit everybody twice to win. You can shoot straight shots or lob them in the air. And there's even three different stages. The controls feel pretty damn good too. In fact, they're even better than the original. Six, the final countdown. Any mini game that lets you punch the crap out of anyone is gonna be a good time. The numbers count down and the floor drops at zero. Now look, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, but I just like doing this sweet Luigi jump kick. Hitting players feels so satisfying. The audio visual feedback is so well fine tuned. 5. Trace Race The idea is so simple. Just trace a line as accurately as you can. I'm not sure if it's because it's with a bright marker, or it's just the aesthetic, but it's such a joy trying to sketch out the line. The controls are just so smooth and work flawlessly. They really made it feel like you're carefully drawing. 4. Rapid River Race Oh man, I forgore just how insane this one can be. You're riding a hovercraft and have to get to the end the fastest. Interestingly, you can control your speed, and the faster you go, the harder it is to avoid the urchins. But that rush that you get going full blast while avoiding all the urchins is incredible, and getting hit just makes you want to try again and get a better score. This is one of the few mini games that I would want to play without the board. It's just that awesome. 3. Paths of Peril We have to start this mini game by just listening to the music for a minute. That added opera was completely unnecessary, but I deeply appreciate it, and it makes Paths of Peril all the more intense and fun. You simply run across a windy path and have to get to the end the fastest, but since it's a race, you try to do this really quickly, and falling causes you to lose a lot of time. The frantic nature is what makes this so excellent, and it's interesting to note that the screen itself no longer loads from one side to the other, but is instead a completely smooth camera. 2. Dungeon Duos There's never been a more amazing 2v2 minigame, and probably never will be. You and a partner take turns navigating an obstacle course, which require quick wit, skill, and trust within each other. You'll open massive doors for each other, spin a lever around a gap so you can both get across, find the right pipe, and finish by blowing up a hot air balloon and escaping. How this concept hasn't been replicated multiple times over is beyond me, because it's so damn good! 1. Book Squirm What else can it really be? Pages continuously fall, and you have to last the longest by avoiding the squish by standing over the holes in each page. It's an ingenious minigame idea even to this day, and it even comes with an endless mode where you have to survive until everyone gets squished. You really have to focus on each upcoming page to make sure you know where to go next. It's really satisfying getting better and spotting where the holes are. There's just something so joyous about this minigame. I'm so glad that it made a triumphant return. And that's all the Mario Party Superstars minigame. Games. Unless Nintendo drops DLC or free updates, which is honestly likely to happen. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day, because until next time, I'm gonna be partying, partying, partying. Not really, I'm not gonna party that much. I'm gonna play a little bit of Mario Party Superstars with a couple friends, and then I'm gonna get back to work, because busy season. Okay, bye.